Welcome to Electron Line. We've been calculating impedances with just two components and two branches. But what happens if we have more than two branches? We can no longer use the product over the sum method. So here we have an example where there's four branches. So to find the total impedance here, we have to use one over the one over rule. In other words, the impedance here, one over the total impedance, will be equal to 1 over the impedance in branch 1 plus 1 over the impedance in branch 2 plus 1 over the impedance in branch 3 plus 1 over the impedance in branch 4. So we're going to illustrate here in this example how we need to do that. So the first thing, notice that you know we kept the numbers quite simple because we're just after the technique. So each of the resistors has a resistance of 1 ohms. We have one capacitor, three inductors. We use small numbers just to make the problem a little bit easier to work with. But here's the technique we're going to use. So we have the impedance Z1 in the first branch, Z2 in the second branch, Z3 in the third branch, and Z4 in the fourth branch. So this becomes the following. 1 over Z total is equal to 1 over, the real part is 1, the imaginary part is negative 1, so we have 1 minus J1 plus 1 over Z2. Uh, that would be uh, 1 plus J2 plus 1 over, the third one just has an inductor, so that will just be G, J5 plus 1 over, here we get 1 plus J3. Okay, the next thing we need to do now is we need to go ahead and find the inverse of each of these terms. But before we can do that, before we can find the inverse, the best thing to do would be to convert it into the, into the magnitude and phase angle portion because then it makes it easier to take the inverse. So let's go ahead and do that. Another option would be to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator, but it's just easier to convert to magnitude and phase angle. So 1 over z total is equal to 1 divided by so that would be the square root of 2, which is 1.41 with a phase angle of minus 45 degrees. Plus, the next one would be the square root of 5, that's 2.24, so 1 over 2.24 with a phase angle of, take the inverse tangent of 2, which is 63.43 degrees. Plus, the next one doesn't have a real part, so that would be 1 over magnitude of 5 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Plus, the next one would be 1 over, we take the square root of 10, which is 3.16, with a phase angle of 3, of inverse tangent of 3, which is 71.565 71 degrees. We'll just get an extra decimal place to eliminate Randolph errors. So now we're ready to take the inverse of each of those. So 1 over z total is equal to, the inverse of that would be 0 0.707, and the phase angle, well, move to the top, becomes a positive 45 degrees, plus 1 divided by 2.24, that gives us 0 0.466, 0 0.466, with a phase angle of a minus 63.43 degrees, plus 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2 with a phase angle, now this becomes minus 90 degrees, and plus 1 divided by 3.16, that's 0 0.316, 0 0.316, that's kind of interesting, yeah, because it was a square root of 10, hmm, that does kind of make sense, with a phase angle of minus 71.565 degrees. Of course, before I can go ahead and add those terms, I need to reconvert each one of them back into the real and imaginary parts. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 over z total is equal to uh, 0.705 times the cosine of 45 degrees, so 0.705. So this is 0 0.5 uh, plus, well, that would be the same, plus j 0 0.5. Let's see here. That would, that's right, because it would be the same in either direction. Okay, next one we take uh, 0.63, oh, no, no, 63.43 degrees, take the cosine of that, multiply it times basically 0.45, and we get 0 0.2. So 0 0.2, and uh, that would be minus j, 63.43 degrees, take the sine of that, times 0 0.466, 
we get uh, basically 0.4. So let's just round it off to minus j, uh, 0 0.4. All right, so we're doing a little bit of rounding here to get nicer rounded numbers. Over here, this is uh, plus. We don't have a real part. We only have an imaginary part, so it would be 0 minus j 0 0.2 because we have 99 degree angle and finally here we have 71.565 take the cosine of that times 0 0.316 that gives us a plus 0 0.1 minus and 71.565 take the sine of that times 0 0.316 equals uh, that would be minus j 0 0.3 Okay, so now we have some nice round numbers that we can easily add together. So 1 over z total is equal to, add the real parts together first, so 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, so we get 0 0.8 for the real part. For the imaginary part, we have 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.4, so that would be minus j 0.4. Okay, now in order to be able to find the inverse of that, z total, we better go ahead and change this back into the magnitude and phase angle format. So to do that, we take 0.8 squared plus 0.4 squared, take the square root of that, which is 0 0.894, 0 0.894, with a phase angle of, let's see here, that would be 0.5, take the inverse tangent, and that's negative, negative 26. 0.57 degrees. All right, so now we're ready to take the inverse of that to find z total. z total will be equal to 1 over that, so 1 over 0 0.894 with a phase angle of minus 26.57 degrees. And now to write that in a better form, we're going to take 1 divided by that, so 1 divided by 0.8944 which is uh, basically 1.12, 1.12 with a phase angle of a positive 26.57 degrees. And then if you want to write it as a real and imaginary part, you take the, uh, let's see, 26.57, take the cosine of that times 1.12, that gives us basically 1 plus the imaginary part 26.57, Take the sine of that times 1.12, and we get plus J5. So this is ultimately the total impedance of those four branches together. Either you place it in the real and imaginary part or magnitude and phase angle part. But that's the final result for the impedance of that circuit. And that's how it's done.